Hey, everybody, welcome to the Treasure of Glory podcast. My name is James Perkins, and I really appreciate you taking the time to check this out. Make sure you check out my website at treasureofglory.com. I've got some blog articles and e-courses that should keep you busy. I also have a YouTube channel. Just look for Treasure of Glory Ministries on YouTube. And I've got videos on a broad range of topics from quantum physics, string theory to the last days, uh, verse-by-verse teachings of the Bible. Actually, right now I'm going through the book of Revelation verse-by-verse, and I just completed chapter 13, which talks about the beast and the mark of the beast and 666 and all of that stuff. So stay tuned because that's going to be coming out very shortly. Today I wanted to talk to you about what we see going on in our culture. For those of you who listen to me a lot, you know I'm all about culture. I'm kind of a culture warrior. Not a social justice warrior, but a culture warrior. I care about our culture because I see the spiritual rot that has set in. And I see the direction we're going. And I've read the Bible. You know, the Bible is the spirit of prophecy. You know, you don't have to be a prophet to know what's coming. If you read the scriptures and you stay plugged into God through prayer and worship, He will show you what's going on in the world and what's coming. You have to pretty much be spiritually blind and out of tune with reality to not see the darkness that is spreading and the spirit of Antichrist that is rising up and becoming more dominant in our culture. And I want to talk to you about that because it's going to get worse for us. And I don't want you to think that you're going to get raptured to escape it, because you won't. I think a lot of preachers are doing a great disservice to their people by preparing them for a rapture instead of preparing them for the beast. Now, I'm not saying that we're going to see the Antichrist in our lifetime. I'm just saying it could happen. And if you're waiting for a rapture, you're going to be very confused when the first thing you see is the false Christ. So I'm here to send a warning to anyone who will listen that you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to get raptured before the tribulation. For those of you who follow me, you know I talk about the rapture a lot. I did a lot of episodes on the rapture. I've done an e-course on the rapture. I've done YouTube videos about the rapture. So I'm really not going to go into too much detail here. But let me share with you one point, because it's very common to hear from pre-tribbers that Jesus would never beat his bride, so therefore we have to be raptured before the tribulation. All right, so let me show you the flaw in this line of reasoning. According to the pre-tribulation rapture, the rapture is imminent. That means when Jesus ascended into heaven, and from that moment on, his return could have happened at any moment. That means in the first century, as Christians were being slaughtered, The rapture was imminent. Jesus could have come at any moment in their lifetimes. But yet we see Jesus beat the tar out of Peter. He beat the tar out of all the apostles, the apostle Paul, and all the early Christians who were fed to lions and burned alive. Was Jesus beating up on them? I mean, is the tribulation of the last days going to be that much worse than being burned alive and fed to lions? Does it even compare to what's coming? And are we supposed to base all of this on the severity of the persecution? I think it's pretty rough being fed to lions and burned alive. I can't imagine it being much worse than that. So why were they not going through tribulation? And where was their rapture? And why did Jesus beat his bride then? And why are we exempt in our generation? So we better be careful what we're teaching people about the rapture. Because if they're not prepared... For the deception that is coming, the persecution that is coming, then they're going to retreat and not know what to do or say. We're not going to be an effective witness for Christ if we retreat. So if we're going to be light and we're going to be salt, that means we have to have influence. That means we need to know what's coming. We need to know how to jump into the fray, how to engage in this cultural war. Instead of being afraid to post something on social media, or Twitter. We need to be bold. Never in your face and confrontational. Always coming across with the love of God, the Father heart of God, which means you want to grow the family rather than turn people away because you're so abrasive. 
you're trying so hard to be right that you're turning everybody off. So remember, the goal is to win people to Christ, not win arguments online. So we have to learn how to engage with our culture in a way that makes Christianity appealing, rather than people looking at it like a bunch of radical nut jobs who are uneducated and backwards. And have you noticed we're always arguing? We're the arguingest bunch of people the world has ever seen, and we're always squabbling about minor points of doctrine. And because of this, we've lost focus of what's important. Come on, we've got to show the world that we're better than this. It's getting to a point where we don't have time to argue over the color of the carpet or whether we should have instruments or not. The darkness is spreading. The spirit of Antichrist, like I said, is becoming more dominant. And if we don't get focused on what's important, we are going to lose a lot of people to the Antichrist, to Satan when we should have been winning people to Christ. But how do we do it? Are we supposed to just take on these demons and these principalities and powers and these evil spirits in the unseen realm? Are we supposed to take them on head on? Are we supposed to go around cursing the devil in the name of Jesus because we have authority? Well, that's one way to put a big target on your back. There is potentially a better way where you focus on just one person at a time. Instead of just sending out your social media posts into the ether and thinking that you're going to change the whole world, how about you try Jesus' approach where you work with a handful of people? That's called evangelism and discipleship, which is basically what we talk about all the time here. First, evangelize. Spread the gospel. Preach the gospel, the good news. Then, if they accept, make a disciple out of them. Teach them the ways of the faith. Teach them God's word. Teach them how to be self-feeders. Teach them how to pursue God on their own. Teach them how to grow as a disciple so they can go make disciples. And we can keep this thing going. But if we're really going to make a difference in our culture, we've got to remember that screaming on social media and walking around in the streets with a megaphone screaming at people is not the best way to do it. Now, this may sound counterintuitive, but how about you shut your mouth, go into the prayer closet or your bedroom or wherever that is, get on your knees and pray. Now, I know you feel like, well, I'm not doing anything. Actually, you're doing everything when you pray. Because when you're praying, you're asking God to fight the battle for you. Instead of you going out there and acting like you're a big shot and you're going to conquer all these demons and principalities, how about you pray? How about you worship? How about you praise and get on God's side and let him move on your behalf? Say, Father, in the name of Jesus, send your mighty angels to fight the principalities and powers that have a stronghold over this nation. Some of you are sensitive enough to know what's going on in your city. You can take the spiritual temperature of your city. Your spirit is sensitive to that stuff and you know what's going on. You see the prostitution. You see the poverty. You see the drugs. You can see what demons are in operation. Instead of running downtown and trying to get all the prostitutes off the street, why don't you pray? Now, I'm not saying be inactive and just pray. But if you're going to do anything, you better make sure you're prayed up. You better make sure you have the power of prayer backing you, or you're going to be met with such resistance that you're going to look like a fool. You really think you're going to take the devil or any principality head on without praying first? You know, there's a way to do this where we can be smart. Just look at Daniel. Daniel took a stand and he would not bow a knee. But you know what? He prayed. He didn't just do that. He had a good relationship with God. He was strong in his faith. And without that, all of the stuff he said would have meant nothing. If you go around talking a big game, but you don't have prayer backing you, you don't have the anointing backing you because you don't have a good relationship with God, You're wasting your time. So Christians, you better get ready for what's coming because it's going to get worse before it gets better. Think about Revelation 13 where it says that nobody can buy or sell unless they have the mark. Think about the fact that the beast is going to overcome the saints and kill them. The only way this is possible is if our freedom of religion and freedom of speech is stripped from us 
And we already see that we're in the preliminary stages of this. We already see where it's going. It's becoming more and more difficult to be a Christian in this culture, if you haven't noticed. I mean a real Christian who has courage to speak out against the sin and the darkness. Not Christians in name only. Not these social justice warrior Christians that have embraced liberalism to the point where you can't tell the difference between the Christian and the world. No, Christians are supposed to stand out. Our message is distinct. It doesn't blend with culture. It goes against culture, and it's supposed to, because it's the truth of God's Word. And it is going to offend people a little bit, but that's okay because it's truth. And if people embrace it, it will set them free. Now, we know most people are not going to embrace it because the world hates the truth. They love lies because their father is the father of lies. You could tell them truth all day long, and if it doesn't agree with their worldview or their political stance, they don't want to hear it. They're just going to make up their own version of truth so they can be politically right. We are up against people who are so hypnotized by the spirit of Antichrist that they don't even know where they're going or what they're doing. And as the church, we are the ones who are supposed to help people snap out of it, so to speak. Wake up. Share the truth with them. Unplug them from the matrix so they can see what's really going on. We have to learn how to engage in the cultural war. Now, how do Christians fight? See, everything in the world is upside down from the kingdom of God. So when we use words like fight and warfare and militant, we're not talking about guns and swords and bombs. We're not talking about fists. See, the way we fight is in prayer. We fight the battle in the spiritual realm in prayer. And then, after we've prayed and we've gotten our orders from our general, then we go out and we engage with the enemy and with our culture. But because we've been in the presence of God, we come out of that with the love of God, the patience of God, the peace of God, and then we're going to be more effective in our evangelism. But if all you do is just stay angry and agitated because you're just plugged into the television and the news all the time, or talk radio or blogs or whatever, rather than staying plugged into God so He can transform us and give us our orders and directions, you're not going to be much use. You're not going to be very effective in the kingdom. So we've got to drop the argumentative spirit, the angry spirit, become more like Jesus if we want to engage with this culture. Now, they can be frothing at the mouth angry all they want to, and that's the way they are. But you are one of God's children, and you need to be a child of love and grace. Share the truth in love. Never back down. Never allow yourself to be censored. Don't worry about what they think, because they don't care what you think. And they don't get to make up all the rules. Now more than ever is not the time to retreat and be silent. If you are a Christian and you know the truth, now is the time for you to rise up and speak that truth into this culture. Because if we don't do it, who will? Are we really going to sit back and let the devil's kids run wild and have total control over everybody and everything while we just sit back, not use our authority, not reign in life through Jesus Christ, but to retreat and be silent? I think that's a sin, to be honest with you. I think God expects more out of his children than that. And I don't want to face him one day and him say, why did you stay silent? You knew so much about my word, but yet you wouldn't say anything about it. I shudder at the thought of hearing that. Let's close this podcast by reading from Ephesians chapter 6, verse 10, something we're all familiar with. I've taught on this numerous times. But you can never get enough of this stuff, right? So, verse 10, Finally, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. So, where do we find our strength? And our intellect? And our cleverly worded arguments on social media? No, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. Now, how do we do this? Put on the whole armor of God. That's how you do it. That's how you find strength in the Lord. You put on the whole armor of God. But how do we do that? Well, let's keep reading. That you may be able to stand against the schemes of the devil. 
for we do not wrestle against flesh and blood. In other words, our enemy is not human, but we wrestle against the rulers, against the authorities, against the cosmic powers over this present darkness, against the spiritual forces. You see, they're spiritual. They're not just physical, they're spiritual, and they're in the heavenly places. So we're talking about a spiritual reality, spiritual entities that we cannot run from and ignore and pretend like they don't exist. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all, to stand firm. See, Paul talks about this like this is a reality. But too many Christians live like these entities don't exist, not realizing that they're out in the middle of a battlefield with absolutely no armor on. Verse 14, Stand, therefore, having fastened on the belt of truth. Now, I like how he says that, stand, therefore. Christians, we need to stand. Take a stand for Christ. You need to stand there with the Word of God and the presence of God in you and say, darkness will not pass. The darkness will not spread any further if I have anything to do with it. I'm taking my stand, and I have fastened on my belt of truth. And having put on the breastplate of righteousness, if you're going to stand there, but you don't live righteously, then you don't have a breastplate on. And if you don't have a breastplate on, your internal organs are exposed, and you're going to get killed. And now verse 15, And as shoes for your feet, having put on the readiness given by the gospel of peace. Now see there? The gospel is a gospel of peace. We don't take swords and guns out into the fight. We take the gospel of peace. Verse 16, In all circumstances, take up the shield of faith, with which you can extinguish all the flaming darts of the evil one, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying at all times in the Spirit, with all prayer and supplication. Notice how Paul ends this. He says, praying. How do we put on our gospel armor? We pray in the Spirit at all times. How do we put on our helmet of salvation? Pray. How do we wield the sword of the Spirit? Pray. See, out of your prayer life, all of this other stuff flows. But without a prayer life and without a root system that goes deep into the presence of God, into the glory of God, you're not going to be very effective for the kingdom. So prayer is where it all begins. So if we're going to make a difference in this culture, we got to get prayed up. Because the devil's kids, they don't have the same mindset that we do. We're talking about peaceful warfare here and praying. Their idea of warfare is completely different. They're ready to fight with fists and bombs and guns. They want to completely take over. Peace is not necessarily something that they're looking for. Control is what the devil wants. No, we're the peacemakers. So we have to stand in the gap and we have to resist and be that light that Jesus said we are so we can expel the darkness. See, light and darkness don't mix. But if your light is out, the darkness is going to occupy the space that you are in. But if your light is on, darkness cannot occupy that space. And the only way to keep your light on, just like a light bulb, you have to stay plugged into God. He is our source. So if you don't have a prayer life, you don't have a Bible study life, you don't have a worshipful life, your light is going out, and the darkness will soon overtake you. So make sure that doesn't happen to you. All right, so start in God's Word, stay in God's Word, and finish in God's Word. Because that's where you're going to find your answers. All right, so I'll see you in the next episode, and God bless.